Have you done any of those uh, live videos or online videos? Do you know what? My car broke down the other week, about uh, a couple of months ago, just before my baby was born in the middle of a pandemic. It was perfect. You can, you Congrats, know. by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and we thought, well, how do we make the best of this? Because we had to get towed home and we had to sit in the car because it was pandemic. We couldn't get into the, we couldn't get into the van with the guy. So we had to sit in the vehicle as he towed his back. Mm. Uh, so we did a gig from there on Instagram. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's the only one I've done. There's, there's wow. talk of doing one, but there's enough going on, man. Yeah. There's enough going on. I'd love to do one. I'd love to carve out a night and sit on uh, sit on YouTube and, you know, sing for a few hours and chat and all that. But uh, at the minute, there's, you know, me, my wife, my daughter's turning 17 tomorrow, my boy's three, my mother-in-law's here, and my baby boy's eight weeks. Do you know what I <laughs> mean? <laughs> yeah. And I'm trying, to, yeah. I'm trying to do my own record uh, yeah. as, you know, as well. I'm trying to kind of hone in on that. Great. Yeah. It's, so, um, it, they're odd. I mean, I did one and it's sort of, it's very, I don't know if this was your experience, but it did not feel anything like performing music <laughs> for people. It it didn't yeah. feel, it, it felt like, um, it felt like a void, you know, <laughs> like you're playing into a, a total, uh, like, like you're like, screaming into a pillow or something it's just like the sound comes out and immediately goes nowhere and there's no feedback of a uh, uh energy from from who's receiving it it's kind of like when that's you're that's how talking. it every time i sing <laughs> but there's a there's a feeling of like at least when you're having a conversation with somebody there's some the, somehow you can you can tell if 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 they're following you or if you've lost them mm -hmm. you know what i mean like and and uh uh it's it's just some it, you can sense in a room even on a phone call you can kind of tell like if you're just pissing in the wind would well, you know what i suppose i didn't really uh we no we didn't gauge a little bit we called one guy uh, we phoned him up and then he sang a song uh, and then went to sing another song and we, we cut him off accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> accidentally. Yeah, and then aside from that, we, uh, aside from that, we just, uh, I just sang songs in the car and ate chips. It was kind of fun. For, I quite enjoyed it, actually. Um, but I haven't, had, I haven't had that time. I need, I need to get another car to break down so I can get a an hour to myself to sing a yeah. couple of songs. Yeah. What what are we doing here? What is this show that you're doing? Do you know what? It's such a stupid concept in so many ways, but in, in so many other ways, it makes so much sense to me. It's like the vinyl supper, I guess, you know, like uh, sitting down to a starter, a main, a dessert, and listening to a record or a song whilst you're eating that. Mm. You know what I mean? And it seems like such a stupid concept in so many ways, but then... I kind of thought, you know what? There are two things that I constantly go to for uh, for solace. You know, yeah, all the time when your head's spinning or you're taking in too much information and you're, you know, and you need to stop, sit back and listen to music, or make a meal. You know, go and eat something and get just and lose yourself in the sensation of that. Yeah, they're two incredible things to get lost in, uh, and it's and I th yeah. At, at one point, at one hand, I was thinking. What a fucking ridiculous time in the middle of a pandemic and the, the biggest civil rights movement since the 60s and, you know, uh, asteroids coming at us and fucking earthquakes in Yellowstone and disparity everywhere you look, you know what I mean? Uh, but at the same time, still need to eat, still need to, still need music. So tell me this, yeah. what are you having for your starter? What time of day are we, are we sitting down to eat? Wow. Well, I guess being as the, like, this is the last one you're going to have. Is this the last one you're going to have? I, I can never know whether to make this, like, the final supper. Oh, wow. You know, like, the last supper. Like, this is the last one you're going to Or is it just a Friday night? Uh, you, know. you know, I might I might need uh, I might need more time. <laughs> okay, I can just be, I don't know. You know, what? for the final, for the final one. <laughs> Let's start, what if we were to start with, like, 
you know, it's just coming into um, tomato season over here. Right. And, and uh, um, like the acidity in a ripe, fresh, just picked tomato is almost hard to believe. Mm. So maybe like. I might swear. Yeah, it's like maybe like a, <laughs> like a caprese salad, like fresh tomato, balsamic, a little burrata cheese, fresh basil. Nice. That'd be my starter. That's a good call for a starter. That suggests to me that it's just the right time of day. It's just can't, it's not it's not it's not dark, but it's not too bright. Sun's yeah. still up. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's cooling down. The mosquitoes aren't quite to your backyard yet (laughs) but they're coming I would probably put on a song called Ode to Switzerland uh, from the Four Brothers Band I feel like it'd be nice to start a a, a meal there as it's sort of like gives you time to gather your thoughts and it's sort of like a uh, a, an announcement, you know, that like, yeah, something's the night is beginning, you know. Do you know what? I'm gonna go with salad as well because as soon as you mentioned the tomatoes, that's kind of got me going for the tomatoes. I used to love that on a sunny day. I lived in Lanzarote for a year when I got married at 23, first time. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and the freshness of those tomatoes, I would just eat them like apples, you know, sitting on the beach eating them like apples. They were delicious. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have a tomato salad as well. Do you know what? I'm probably gonna go a Greek salad. I think I, I I'm this is probably gonna show up a lot in my in my starters. I just love Greek food in general. But a Greek salad, a fresh one as fresh as it comes. A glass of vino. Uh and what would I listen to? Do you know what? The first song that comes to mind, uh I don't know if it's because that Four Brothers track reminds me of it. You know, um, the cinematic orchestra, uh, Man with the Moving Camera, I think it's called. To be honest, it's it hasn't really felt like the most creative time, save for a few little bursts of of energy. Um, mm-hmm. It hasn't. I haven't really felt like going to pick up a guitar that much. Um, mm-hmm. I brought some keyboards back, as you can see, and and um, that was a little. That was kind of where my head was at, um, a little more than guitar. Um, but every so often, there'll be a couple of days here where I'll just kind of like pick it up to make sure I I still know <laughs> what I'm doing, and then yeah, you know, I'll put it down. You know, it's just I, I don't know if you if have you been feeling inspired to write and play much um yeah yeah i mean not uh not much because uh, uh, maybe maybe ball. that's maybe that's why because i've got so you know i've got so few pockets where i can actually uh get the get the time it takes to sit and really write mm-hmm. that any time at any time i do I, i'm i've got I've, I've plenty of ideas that have sort of been building up in me mm-hmm so I'm glad of the time to get sitting down and get get it out of me and you know on the on the logic great yeah <laughs> and and see what it's actually like because it's only then you know right yeah you know in your head that can sound all kinds of stuff but the second you listen back to it and sitting you know that's the cool light of day right there <laughs> you know what man I love I love the way you don't stick to the guitar though I mean uh when that uh is it look at me the the first EP that you released uh, it's or, just called Look. Look, yeah. yeah. You know, when that was coming out, I think I think all of us that were, you know, huge fans of Hey Ho and forgotten the name of your other record, Break, Mer- uh, Break, uh, Break Mirrors. The first, that's the first one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think there was an expectation, wasn't there, for folks? I loved, I loved that you uh, really fucked with that. Well, you know, whether that was a you know pointed thing, I, I, it seemed to me like you were just not so much fucking with people's perception of you, but just fucking with your own uh, interests, you know, following mm-hmm. your own world and not getting caught up in anything you'd done before, which was uh, that was a real delight. My perception of what I think somebody else's perception of me 
would be or must be in order to fuck with it, like you're saying, yeah. is also inaccurate. Like it's the it would just keep going back and forth. Yeah, you know, of like uh, struggling to um, understand and and be understood. Uh, so I don't um, I don't try I, I try not to make too many decisions from that place of like just trying to stir shit up but i i do know that that like naturally I, that I, it did i'm yeah, well i'm just naturally prone to um trying to offer something else you know mm. like what's expected is um maybe less satisfying to me when i hear it when when mm. when like the thing that i expect happens it's not as satisfying as 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 having it uh, take a slight detour and what about like as an eater like if you order <laughs> you order, order yeah, jazz eating it doesn't really it doesn't come quite as you expected it i don't know if that's as uh, as satisfying yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah if those tomatoes come and they've been you know they've been sort of off the vine for a while they've been in the back of the fridge yeah you, got, yeah. you know somebody's like, hard well just like there's something you ordered the caesar salad and somebody you know got a little creative with it and you're 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 eating you know uh i don't know a gr- like i don't grilled, i'm not grilled, grilled, <laughs> grilled lettuces with um you know with like anchovies on a uh, rock candy skewer or you know some something where you're you're just wow. a little uh uh do you know what? There's somebody somewhere would think that's delicious. Yeah. I mean, you could say that for a lot of music, too, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's you why. can say it for a lot of music, man. There's some songs about it at the minute. There's a thing that people are doing with their voice at the minute that is, uh, I don't know if it's as, as prevalent in the U.S. as it is in, in, over here, but it's like this, um, like, uh, so lover becomes lover. Yeah. Brother become, you know, brother, I'll take you from another, and sort of mistaking, you know, get, getting empathy and sympathy and just sort of mashing them all up together and, you know, everything's my brother, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's sh- like R's become W's and, uh, and it's, it's baby talk. It's, it drives me fucking insane. No, I mean, not, not yeah. like, uh, it doesn't piss me off in that way. It just, I just think it's crazy when i hear people going oh this yeah. guy or girl's got a great voice <laughs> it's like what <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's uh it's like a condensed form of of emotionalism like yeah. <laughs> it's like if you were gonna like cook something down till like the only thing that's left is is just the 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 sugar and <laughs> That's sort of the hydrogenated with, fats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And corn exactly. syrup and shit. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I'm, I've had this conversation before, and and I stand by it. Like, there's absolutely such thing as musical fast food. You know. And, oh and, yeah. Uh, to just sort of satisfy those receptors immediately with something that uh, might only be palpable for. 30 seconds or palatable rather. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I think, um, I th- th- there's, there's a reason for it too. Like there's a reason why it's so prevalent now. And I think it's because f- for a minute, about 15 years ago, maybe the, the sort of patron saint of the recording arts were car commercials and landing um landing a spot on an advert was now like the golden ticket and people started to make music that sounded like a car commercial um i remember that time well that you have to you have to pack everything in those 20 seconds or 30 seconds um that that you can uh and you know what? When songs come on like that, the fir- those first thirty seconds, you're thinking, "Wow, this is what a sound!" You know, this is really mm. something. Um, but there's no evolution, you know. And like you're, 
what what can you do at that point like it's ba- it becomes sort of like the music sounds like flashcards it's like any development is just about like taking something that's already there and either muting it or like filtering it you know or if you if you do need to make a big dynamic shift it's it's this scene change that mm. feels like a it's the music sounds like collage art or something it's just this mm. this uh um you're bombarded with it uh but it's it it was the the ecosystem right it's the reward structure was was based on music that sounded like that being mm. good and uh um it's a commodity and interestingly enough it's like built to sell another commodity you know in an advertisement um i think that has a that had a profound effect on record making not even just not even pop record making just what people imagine a record sounding like you know when they're going in and wondering am, am i on the right track here or am i close to being done you're comparing it to your mind's eye uh version of of of, of what a done record sounds like and feels like i hear you man uh, it, it was a couple of years back uh, uh someone tweeted it or something I, I came across this uh a jingle for radio one over here and it was Jimi hendrix doing the jingle for radio one <laughs> you know and it sounded dope as fuck obviously because it was Jimi hendrix and he was just going at it mm. and singing going for going for it and uh i remember thinking wow that was a time when jingles sounded like rock and roll and now modern music sounds like jingles. It's like everything's so, like you said, it's a bite size, you know, A section, repeat the A section, not too long in the B section, the B's back in the A section, get back to the B quickly and then get out, you know. Yeah. It's like, wow, it's so, uh, yeah, it's odd, it's, you know. And it doesn't piss me off like it, like it did years ago, you know, I just think, why are they playing all this shit? Um, and not me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I suppose I just never, uh, I've never, li- I've never listened to the radio unless you're listening to some obscure station that's like kind of trying to pick out interesting things. I've never listened to kind of popular radio and ever really been excited about it. You know, before I became a musician, even as a kid, you know, radio and pop music and I don't know, I just got a different focus. And also, let's let's make, let me make no bones about it. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of st- stuff I realize is it's doing what it, it's doing exactly what it's meant to do. You know, fair fair play to them on one hand. You know, like you're mm-hmm. they're out there having the life of it, and and uh, and people are listening to it and, and loving it, and and fair play. You know, yeah. it's great, and there is an there is an art to doing that. I, I see that it's just an art form that feels so. Uh, so deeply sewn into the fabric of, of, of the radio, of the persona, of the thing, of the money, of the fame, of the, uh, it just feels the, that's f- so far away from what music is to what music is. Do you think chefs cook better when they're hungry? Do you know what? I don't know that my first answer is, uh, I would imagine all chefs cook when they're hungry because do they not just live on like cocaine? Well, I mean, like, like <laughs> if they were making, if they were making, uh, you know, said dish on an empty stomach versus said dish um, having just eaten something else or even eaten said dish. Like, do you think the senses uh, are affected by by that? You know, that they're they're sort of tools with which they use to make decisions. I mean, maybe. I, I don't know chef? anything I don't about know. cooking, but I don't know if it's if there is as much, uh, you know, if it's more about following a certain um, recipe and and kind of doing the same thing over and over and over again and and having it be um, more consistent. I think that's well. If he's rewarding. hungry, right? What if he's hungry and uh, and and he's really and he's really hungry? 
right? And he's chef. Chefs can be like, this is a head chef. We're getting, it's a vinyl supper, so we're getting the best chef around. Let's say it's like Gordon Ramsay or something like that. If Gordon Ramsay's hungry, I'd imagine he'd be a bit of an, he could get hungry very quickly. So what if, what if he just decides to just not cook what we want and cook what he wants to eat because he's hungry and he thinks, fuck you two, this is better for mm-hmm. you anyway, eat it. There's a, a quote, and I don't know if it's, if it's his or if I just heard it through him, but um, this was this was a Gary Busey ism. Uh, he said, "Championships are won on empty stomachs," and wow. sometimes I'll like, sometimes I'll be I'll be like in the zone, you know, like really productive, working on something for a while, and and realize that I've been running on fumes, you know, I haven't eaten anything skipped breakfast like lunch is come and gone and i'm just Mm -hmm. flying on like coffee residuals Mm -hmm. and um and i feel like i'm really in the zone now i don't know if if how often those are the days where i come back uh the next day and i listen to the things that i did before i'm just like oh Mm. i should have taken a break you know (laughs) but um but i can it can you can get into that that cycle you know that sort of frame of mind that focus yeah you can well speaking of which then let's let's remember to eat let's have our let's have our main course okay i think i'm going to go mexican because you well, the first time i uh or not the first time i saw you but we, the first time we recorded in um at, at tony's place the mm-hmm. we studio there you took me to this killer little joint and we had the, the i can't remember the beer michelada we, Michelada, yeah. Yeah, the restaurant is called Monte Alban. When I was in Mexico City with Band of Horses, I must have been like 21 or 22 at this point. Um, I remember we were at a bar and I saw the bartender pouring this mixture, this this pre-made mixture into a glass uh, at the same time as a, as a, as a beer, um, mixing them together. And uh, I said, "What's that?" And, and, um, <laughs> and he said, "It's a it's it's a Cuban style beer." Um, and uh, I I ordered one. I tasted it, and it was just like this salty, savory, spicy, kind of like kind of like a Bloody Mary with beer. Yeah, I like that because it's that's what I would want. That's what I would want from a Bloody Mary. Uh, because uh, I don't really like Bloody Marys that much. I've had a couple of good ones in my life, but I've always wanted to love one. Do you know what I mean? Every time mm-hmm. I see one, I'm like, Fuck, mm-hmm. come on, love that. Uh, and I had that beer and I thought, this is like, this could be like my Bloody Mary. Yeah. You know, I can get back on the drinking truck again. I've got a Sunday, <laughs> I've got a Sunday hangover drink. <laughs> and I'm going to have it with, I would have it with, a. I would, you know what? Enchiladas and... Some, uh, I'm going to go uh, hard shell. Yeah, I'm going to go hard shell uh, tacos. Okay. Mm. What's in with them? Like what? off with, the, you know, like the, you know, all the onions. Cilantro. And the, cilantro, yeah. yeah. All right. What's but, in but, the... But uh, with some jalapenos on top. Uh-huh. What's in the enchiladas and uh, and uh, tacos? What, what kind of enchiladas? Chicken. Mm-hmm. Chicken enchiladas and uh beef tacos it's kind of like one of those uh shapeshifter songs we were talking about earlier where you go from greek salad to just full yeah. on you're 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 at epcot center at this point and you're just like yeah. kind of cruising around the globe you know what i'm gonna have i'll have i'm gonna have a cuban song i want to listen to a cuban song because i'm having okay. that sort of uh, original cuban i'm gonna listen to uh the first song, can I remember the name of it? First song in the Chan Chan, the first song on, on Buena Vista Social Club. It was mm-hmm. the first song I ever heard of theirs. There's always something about the first song. I know the seventh song always makes you, you cry, but the first song is the one I always go to first. <laughs> I go to the you know? third. I go to the third yeah. song. The third song to me on a record is like the second verse of a song. Yeah. You know, where I'm curious to see what somebody's doing when they feel like they've got a little bit of like familiarity with you like what what chances are they willing to take on the third song where they're not trying to prove themselves anymore 
at this point, I think I would really like to hear this um, Joao Gilberto uh, song on a on a record called just Joao. I think it's this song called Sampa. Gabby, my girlfriend, made this pasta from scratch the other day. Um, that was so good. She it was it was this um, this style where you you roll the um, the dough with like this part of your hand, like what you would use to palm mute. Yeah. and you you just sort of it's small it's about um about like maybe an inch and a half long and you just roll it and it does this little twist and um and so it like it it hold it collects Cups the sauce yeah. yeah yeah and then she made a um pesto from scratch um we've been getting these farm boxes every week uh, uh, fr- from a Great company idea. called Sway here in the states, S U A Y, and they they are uh, uh, they make they make things from like textiles. They'll do um, pillow covers and bed duvet covers and some clothing. And they uh, have a they have a, 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 a warehouse. Uh, about 10 minutes from where we live where they make everything in house and they pay all of the garment workers that they employ a living wage and they um, have this farm box service every week where you buy one box and in it you get really delicious fresh produce um, and then some other goodies like coffee beans and um uh tortillas and it just changes every week but every Love box changes that, every week yeah every box that you buy they they donate a box to a garment worker uh family and they've been do- they've donated over 200 mm-hmm. boxes every week um to families of garment workers that's incredible it's it's mind blowing and they they halted production on all all of the um, um, homewares and clothing and everything a couple months ago to start building masks, and um, huh. they made over a hundred thousand masks in something like I don't know it must have only been a couple of months, um, and they donated over half of those masks. It does not value profit nearly as much as mm. impact, um, and that's a really difficult thing to do. It's 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 a lot harder to do in the retail and fashion world than it is in the music world. You know, there are a lot of artists who get a certain reward, and um, um have a certain reputation when they when they are perceived to like sacrifice mm. um sacrifice like potential success for their art or whatever you know it's like it's it's seen as um some it's like honorable um and in business i think it people are sort of like well it didn't really work did it you know like you weren't you're Mm-hmm. you're operating in the red so therefore like it must have not have been a very good idea you know and it's, you know it's that, that's such a sad uh sad way to to think of such ventures right it's like i yeah. always remember this story i don't know who might have been my dad told me about you know this girl and her dad going to the beach and there was loads of loads of like starfish on the beach and she was going oh they'll all die so she grabs one and throws it in and he says darling you'll never You'll never save them all. That'll, you'll never make a difference here. He said, "Well, it made a difference to that one. Mm-hmm. You know, made a difference yeah. to that one. He's he's back in the water. He's happy." Yeah, it's like I love I love 
ventures that do stuff like that. Tom's is, do that as well. Tom's mm-hmm. shoes and Tom's glasses. And uh, they might even have ventured into clothes as well. I don't know. But I know, I remember when you bought a pair of shoes, they would send a pair, you know. Yes. It's, yeah, it's, right. yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just a, it's a, a mindfulness that all of us as consumers need to start becoming more familiar with. I mean, I certainly, it's, it's relatively new for me. Um, and, uh, and I, I need to retrain myself to, to, to not buy things that I don't need, you know, whether that's food or anything really like Mm -hmm. that being the first step. Um, but then with my purchases, um, to, to maybe do a little bit more research and be more vigilant, um, with, with you know the the, the dollar, uh, and mm-hmm. and where it's going, and who it's supporting, um, and it's never been easier to figure that stuff out. You know, it's like a couple Google searches, and you sort of have what you need. I think I just want pavlova, but it's a lot of it named after the Russian ballerina Anna Pavlova. Um. Origins, Australia and New Zealand. A dessert like that and and all the alcohol, your blood sugar in like a few hours, you're going to be, even if you do fall asleep, you're going to be up like three in the morning. (laughs) Just like going. I'm up at three in the morning anyway. YouTube rabbit hole. Well, this is why. I really like it. I really like it. And I'm in the mood for it. And I'm probably going to listen to something quite Pavlova as well. Uh, Tchaikovsky. <laughs> you know what? Uh, what would I listen to with my Pavlova? I want to listen to some Prince. I want to listen to Raspberry Beret and eat some Pavlova. I think I'm going to put some coffee ice cream and a banana in the blender with a little bit of milk and uh, make a, a coffee banana milkshake Um, that sounds fucking incredible yeah that's the move for dessert for me and then I think I think I'd like to cap off the evening with a song by my friend Aaron Embry Um, and uh, he's got a record that I think is called the wheel that's really beautiful and uh okay i i would like to have that be maybe the last thing i i uh hear before the guillotine comes down tonight you know um, at, at the end of the last meal i like that it's the, just the guillotine coming down tonight in this one uh, every other meal the asteroid has been hitting or jupiter was coming one of the weeks i think mm-hmm. and we were going to uh it just came out of orbit. Nobody knew why. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is this is a good one. Just you know, it's just the end. Yeah. You just finish off the night like this. Yeah. The curtain, the proverbial curtain, drops. <laughs> and you know, on, on the on the back of your neck. Um. Yeah, man. This was fun. Yeah, man. Thank you very much for taking the time. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Good to catch up with you. It's great to see your face. Likewise, mate. Likewise, and I'll send you a couple of tracks after this. Uh, I'll send you a couple of songs from what what I'm working on at the minute. Please do, just for your yeah. Please do, yeah. I'll do. I'll do it now before I forget. I'm excited to hear it. All right, boy. Coming your way. Thanks, man. Love to your family. <laughs>